Again, thank you all so much for being flexible um, and meeting here in this place today um, and for uh, just knowing that uh, wherever we are gathered, um, the Spirit means us and we can worship and be with one another. Amen. So thank you for that. Uh, prayers that um, will continue to um, progress so we can get things fixed downstairs. Um, so those would be appreciated. Uh, a couple of announcements um, okay. for everyone to know. Uh, there are a couple of events that are happening in the Harrisburg community. Um, next, or this coming week, uh, July 16th through the 18th, um, Brad Dixon um, is a part of a local um, interdenominational ministers group um, that's putting on various services uh, to pray over our city um, and to um, have different churches come together um, and just keep Harrisburg lifted. Um, there's going to be three separate services, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. They all begin at 7 p.m. Um, at the Harrisburg First Assembly uh, of God Church. Um, so if you're interested in meeting other um, pastors in the area, seeing Rev Dixon, um, and also just keeping Harrisburg lifted, uh, there's a couple of services that you can choose from um, to go to. I don't know which one uh, Rev Dixon's going to be a part of, um, so you might just reach out to him to see if you want to see him particularly um, about which evening he'll be there. Uh, the second thing I want you guys to um, have on your radar, uh, this Tuesday at 6 p.m., uh, the Washington City Church of the Brethren is putting on an event uh, called Building Christian Solidarity with Palestine, and they um, have put together a lot of um, different organizations in the D.C. area that they've been working for, specifically for a ceasefire in the region. And so if you're interested in learning how you can get involved, I know that a lot of us um, are asking questions about what we can do and how we can be support um, to our Palestinian brothers and sisters. I invite you to um, check out this event. Um, there is a virtual option. You just have to register in order to receive the Zoom link. Uh, so the link um, for the registration is in the bulletin. And if you are having trouble accessing it, um, just send me an email and I'll be able to send you the Zoom link uh, for the event once it comes up. Um, and something for you to mark on your calendars, uh, for next Sunday. So uh, many of you um, who are here uh, participated or heard of um, a couple weeks ago, we gathered friends of First Church and four members um, to come and sing the Alleluia Chorus for Brother Woody. Um, and we want to give the whole congregation an opportunity to sing um, this choral piece um, to share with him. And so next Sunday, what we're planning on doing is we will meet up here for service so we can stay nice and cool as we worship and hear the word. Uh, but after service, anyone who wants to be a part of the choir who wasn't able to the last time we did it, we're going to gather in the sanctuary um, and we're going to uh, sing again the Alleluia Chorus. Uh, this week we'll be sending out some YouTube videos and also some music. If you are somebody who um, just uh, you learn by listening or learn by reading music. Um, all voices are welcome. Pastor Lexi is going to participate, so if I can participate, then I know that others can participate. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I just invite you to stay after service um, next week uh, to sing together, um, especially for uh, Brother Woody. Pastor, so, can yeah. I edit that? So we're going to do uh, service, like she said, up here. Um, the closing of the service will be going downstairs and sitting, like the closing hymn, the closing song. Um, so it's not like after service, all right? Um, when the, the sermon is finished, we'll invite everyone to go downstairs and we'll try to sit, um, you know, higher singing men in one area, higher singing women, the lower voices in another area. So you can follow some of the folks that might know the parts a little better. Um, Yvonne Broad will be here to sing the, the soprano, hallelujah. Um, <laughs> I'll be singing the tenor, and we have some, some baritones coming as well. So um, you do not need to be a trained singer. It is a hard song to sing, but just come and have fun. It's going to be a good time. Our church has a uh, heritage of singing this piece together. Uh, decades ago, uh, some of you would remember gathering at the Keeney's house to just sing it around a piano. And so Brother Woody, uh, one of his sort of final wishes is to was to hear that on the organ, and uh, we were hoping that maybe he'd be well enough to come. That's probably not going to happen, but 
uh, we continue to uh, lift up Brother Woody, and we want to uh, do that uh, this coming Sunday for the closing of our worship next Sunday. Sorry about that. No. Sorry to interrupt you. No. So my invitation is then to stay for service. There it for is. The, here we go. <laughs> All right, there are many more things that are happening here in the life of our congregation and in our community. So again, I just encourage you to look at the bulletin um, and to see what other things are happening in our midst. Uh, but at this time, I'll just uh, uh, move us forward in our service as we continue welcoming the Spirit to be among us. We welcome one another in this space. Um, it's a little easier, I think, to walk around here since there's not as much space. But I still invite you to um, come out for where you're seated. Um, to walk around and say hi to everyone as we, again, just worship the uh, worship together and fellowship with one another. Um, as people are coming in, um, if you could just uh, be mindful that we'll try to make sure people know where some empty seats are um, and that everyone has a seat at the table um, for service today. So at this time, I'll just invite you to come out from where you're seated to say hello to one another. And don't forget to greet those that are on the Zoom screen over there, too, while we sing. And if you really want to make Jane and Roger's day, you can tell them good luck in It keeps going out. <laughs>
We thank you, Lord, for just the flexibility and, and being willing to move things around and do things different uh, so that we can be together um, as best as possible. God, we just pray again that you will do what only you can do. We pray that you'll help us to give you the praise that you so richly deserve, God. We just love you. Thank you for all these and many other things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah.
for yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen for yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory Amen. 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 Amen.
Aleluya. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. We're praying for our children next, right? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. One detail we didn't think about when we came up here is how hard that floor is. So maybe next week we'll have a little comforter for the kids to come and sit up here. Um, but as the kids are around the space, um, just extend a hand as we pray for each one. God, thank you so much for um, the youth, for the young adults, for the children in our midst, Lord. We thank you for um, all that you're doing in their lives already. God, we, we call all of them young disciples because we see you at work. We see what you're already doing. God, we just lift them before you. Uh, just help all, of, especially the youngest children, to know how important they are to this family of faith, Lord. Help the youth to know how important they are to this family of faith. Help the young adults to know how important they are to this family of faith, Lord. We thank you for, for each one of them, Lord God. We pray that you'll protect them, Lord, that you'll order their steps, Lord, that you'll show them the path you want them to go, and, and that they'll have the courage to step into it. We pray the same thing for each of us, Lord. God, we just pray that we as a family of faith uh, might show one another how important each member of this family yes, is. Thank you so much for, for each one. Uh, we lift each one before you this day. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. 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 Are the children hanging out, Renee, in the space? Okay. Okay. Miss Chloe and Miss Brielle are going to take the children's. And, um,. I don't know if any of you noticed, but when you sat at your round tables, um, at the middle of the table should have been a piece of paper that has the morning scripture on it. Um, so what I'm going to invite you to do um, is go verse by verse and pass the paper around. So we're going to read the scripture at our tables together, all right, as a family of faith. Instead of somebody being up here talking at y'all, um, I'm going to invite the praise team, if, if you're able, to find a seat at a round table. It'll make the it'll make the sermon part way better if you can have somebody to talk to. Legit. Yeah. Um, so at this time, I do invite you to pass that paper around and just read verse 12, and then somebody else read verse 13, and so on and so forth. And it's Second uh, Samuel chapter six, verse twelve to twenty-two.
Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah, church. All right. Praise the Lord. So, um, I was going to, I have written down here to invite you guys to like move seats to sit with people you might not know so well. But as I look out at the tables, it looks like there's a, at least a halfway decent mix at, at all the tables. So that's part part of the good thing, not setting up extra seats so people can space out. was forcing you to, to be uh, together. So um, if you would want to switch seats, you can do that. Um, we are going to do a little interaction around tables this morning. Um, as we prepared, um, so when I got back from conference, I heard from quite a few people about how hot it was last Sunday. And uh, I missed that. I uh, wouldn't say I missed it, but I was not here for it. And uh, so we started talking about uh, what are we going to do as a result. We looked at the, the weather, and there was a couple cool days during the week, but it was going to be in the 90s again Saturday. So we just we thought, let's give it a shot, and let's, let's worship upstairs. Um, and as Lexi and I were talking about that, um, she uh, said something I thought that was pretty profound. I don't remember the exact words, but... Um, she said something like, you know, um, when we talk about this, we, we shouldn't talk about it being like an obstacle or a challenge. We should talk about it as, as an opportunity. It's a chance to do something or some things maybe a little differently than, than we always do. And I, I don't know how many of you um, remember back during pandemic, we did a lot of interesting stuff as a result of that. One of the things we did was um, there's an amazing woman from Columbus, Ohio named Caitlin Hansen that came to us virtually and talked to us about um, asset-based uh, community development. And the idea behind that is um, whenever there's something that uh, we might see as a challenge, whenever we see something that, uh, oh, man, just like it's really hard, to, to flip the script on that and to instead see what is the asset, what is the positive thing, what is the opportunity. And so um, when Lexi asked the question, it seemed to me, well, that's right in line with all of that, right? And uh, Leonard Dow met with us a couple weeks ago with our discernment team as well as our stewardship team, and he brought some uh, thoughts along those same lines. How can we think about what it is that um, others might see as difficulties? How can we flip those things and, and use them as opportunities? And so that's what we're trying to do. And I appreciate you guys uh, rolling with it and, and trying some new stuff. Um, we, we did think um, that maybe just reading the scripture together would be like one new thing and sitting around round tables would be another new thing. Um, and so we decided we would do a whole lot else super duper new. Um, for this first time. And then I started preparing for the message and I was like, you know what? They're going to be around round tables. Why don't we talk about this a little bit? We have heritage in the Church of the Brethren that comes from an Anabaptist and Radical Pietist heritage. Those are long words that you might not know what they mean. Um, Anabaptist, um, at its simplest form, means uh, to baptize again. Okay, We were one of the first denominations that um, decided, you know what? Um, people should be baptized when they know better and they're making a decision, right? It's not the water that's saving them, it's the Holy Spirit that's doing the work. And so um, that's what that Anabaptist kind of piece means. Um, the radical pietism has a, a lot of different applications, and I'm glad Drew's not here to tell me I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> one of the things about radical pietism is uh, the fact that the Spirit reveals the Spirit self to every single person as we gather together. There's not one person, okay? In, in certain denominations, you know, the pastor is put on this pedestal, especially like the high church tradition, the priest is called father and wears robes and stuff like that. In the Church of the Brethren, our pastors are probably more trained than some, but there are those, I, I named Drew, there are those, John Brenneman, some others that are, that are in our number that are as well trained as our pastors as far as theology. And it's not just about being trained that way to be able to bring gifts, to be able to bring knowledge, to be able to learn together, to be able to draw one another closer to God. Um, uh, it, it takes all of us in, our, in all of our experiences, and there's a beautiful thing that happens when we gather together around the Word of God and uh, just see what the Spirit does um, in our midst. So um, because of that heritage, that's why we started doing, several months ago, maybe even a year ago, I forget when we started, doing sermon talkback. Um, some of you have never stayed for that, and that's okay. We didn't want it to be something that was forced, but we wanted it to be uh, an opportunity where after Lexi or myself or whoever's preaching brings the word for the morning, 
um, then uh, afterwards um, you can bring whatever you thought uh, should have been talked about or what the spirits are feeling to you or um, ask questions about whatever was shared. So that's one of the reasons why um, we do this talk back time um, every Sunday. I thought we'd include some of this kind of discussion um, because we're around tables today. So um, whether you like that or not, it's what we're going to do. So um, <laughs> I hope that you'll um, take this as an opportunity, like we said, um, to, to learn from each other. Um, it's not just me that's going to bring knowledge today. It's, it's all of us that will that'll learn together, ideally. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah? Amen. 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 So the first thing I want to invite you to think about some of you started doing this already, which is kind of cool. Um, I wonder what he's going to say. Is he going to talk about this scripture, right? Um, Pastor Belito Mitchell used to uh, lead our midweek Bible studies, um, not every week, but once in a while. Um, and one of the questions she would always ask, I don't know, Romaine, do you remember? What was one of the questions she would always ask? If you were going to preach on this text, what would the title of your sermon be? Okay. Um, what I'm going to invite you guys to discuss around tables, not, not exactly that, but, but close. If you're going to preach this, or if you're going to teach a Bible study about that scripture that you just read, what would be kind of the focus? If you want to get your creative juices flowing and you want to come up with a title, feel free to do that. I'm just going to give you a couple moments to, to talk around your table. What do you think the focus, and I see some wrinkled faces like, I don't know. That's the whole idea here, okay? <laughs> what would be the focus? What stuck out to you as you read the text? You're going to hear what stuck out to me in a minute, but I want to know what stuck out to you all. So I'll give you a couple minutes to, to discuss that. And I'm going to put the question up here in case you forget. We, we started with uh, the primary sentiment being that we are being called to live authentically, right? Like that in this passage we can see that authenticity can sometimes cause problems for us in the world. But ultimately, if we are living authentically based on what we know to be honoring to God, behavior that is seen as sometimes countercultural, but inherently what God has called us to do, that our sermon title will be authentic. What was it again? Authentic. Authentically living out our faith in the world. Yeah. Who else can preach that one? That's, that's right. Exactly. I love that. I love that. <laughs> You gonna preach that, Natasha? Okay. No, no. <laughs> Who else? Who else? That's a hard act to follow. Anybody else? It doesn't need to be that deep. Just. I'm sorry. My son doesn't want me to talk, but for some reason today, like I think it might be because I was the Sunday school lesson last week was on David and Bathsheba. <laughs> So for some reason, for me personally, the theme is like, it's okay to question authority. Like, maybe David should have kept his clothes on, you know? <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I love it. I love it. Fantastic. Maybe he should have. Maybe he, oh, are, are we sure we want to do this? All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Howard. I like the part where he get bread, raisin, dates where he fed the people before they Back Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Howard. Look at that. I'm not sure he was not the only one. Who else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. It's good. It's good. Um, it's interesting how we can look all look at the same text and a lot of different stuff pops out. I, I love that, Renee. That um, some of. Uh, Kind of Michael's role in the story definitely stuck out to me as well, and like the fact that she felt the agency to like say something to the king. Um, she wasn't even a member of the royal family. In fact, she was part of like the rival family, kind of right. Um, but she still felt that agency to to call it out. That that's that's beautiful. I mean, thank you for that. Um, so, for me, as I was digging into this and, and looking at the story. Um, I found it interesting that it didn't seem like the main character was really a person. It seemed like the center of, of um, this scripture was really the ark itself. The ark.
bless your name today. We pray that um, you'll go with us from this place. We thank you for meeting us here. We thank you that you're not uh, held in any tabernacle like back in the day, that, that you dwell with your people wherever we go. God, go and order our steps. Show us where you want us to be, what you want us to do. Um, we thank you, Lord, that you're not done with any of us. Um, thank you, Lord, that you're not done with this body, this faith community. Lord, we just um, offer you all of who we are, that you might do what only you can do right here and right now. God, help us to, to give you our all um, collectively and as um, individuals. And uh, just continue to be with us. We bless your name this day. And thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. amen. Y'all can go in peace. Um, thank you so much for being here. Remember, next Sunday we will have worship up here. Our service will end next week downstairs as we sing the hallelujah chorus together in the sanctuary. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah.